What's up guys? This is a special treat for me. I am here introducing you guys to a couple of our, I'm just gonna call you guys trout bums. You cool with that? Fine Works for me. me. All right, <laughs> I got Callan and Andrew. If you guys have come into our store, you have been lucky enough to talk to these two dudes. They are a couple of the fishiest guys that I know. I mean, you guys basically both grew up in this store. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, now you're working here. There are a couple of the nicest dudes ever as well. So today we're gonna kind of break down their approach to stream trout fishing. And you guys are pretty extreme. So and yeah. I love it. So, you ready? Oh, oh yeah. And we got a drink. Yeah. Sure. Okay, course, welcome to, welcome to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Cheers, my friends. Cheers. Cheers, come pie. All right, let's do it, guys. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products. Featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. Welcome back my friends. I am Ben with the Hookup Tackle, the Tackle Taku on Instagram, being joined by my buddies, Kellen and Andrew. Kellen, what's your Instagram handle? Uh, at Kellen Doctor. I got AG underscore fishing X. Really? I, I need to you couldn't it. come up with an easy <laughs> one? <laughs> oh someone, God. Someone, God. someone had already and we made stolen him change my name. Oh my God. Yeah, okay. They okay. Didn't make me change right. it back. Well, we are being joined by our buddy at Desert Bass and we're the Hookup Tackle USA. So, what's up, CJ? What's up, man? Didn't mean to ignore you. No, it's okay. <laughs> I'm actually changing my name to Big Worm Fisher 6969. Yeah, make sure there's like an underscore yeah. or something in there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that it makes no sense. Yeah, that'd be, right. that'd be great. And I'm excited big? for this one. This is going to be a cool one. Yeah. Did you say Big Worm 69? Big Worm 69. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't change mm -hmm. it. The puzzle has to fit. Wait till I'm through a full Oreo. You know? <laughs> oh, ho, oh. mm -hmm. ho. All right. Well, since we started it weird, we might as well stay weird. It's, it's We're going to be video. talking trout. Yeah, it's trout. It's a trout video. Yeah, people know. So, Trout fishing is something that is really kind of personal to me. I grew up trout fishing. So that's really kind of where I fell in love with fishing. The first fish I ever caught was a brown trout. And it just, it really kind of sparked my love. I used to grow up and I spent half my years here in Phoenix and half my years in a little town called White River, which is up on the Apache Indian Res. And I would just spend full summers just doing what you guys are doing, diving through canyons, finding the most remote shit I could, catching them the coolest way possible. Over the course of you know, the last probably 20, 30 years, trout fishing has kind of had this stigma, right? When I was a fly fishing guide, you know, fly fishermen are just such elitist pricks. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> so you're like an elitist prick that's part of the little crew, right? Or you're like a power bait dunker. Exactly. And that's yeah, like right. the two kind of worlds that have lived in the trout fishing yeah. realm. And then everything else has just kind of been a gray area, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if a, if a fly fisherman saw you, you know, wading through a stream, throwing a spinner, he would just kind of write you off as, right. oh, you're, kind of, you're a hillbilly. Up until recently, really the, the gear, whether it was the rods, the reels, the, the tackle, was kind yeah. of boogin. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it was kind of hillbilly. Janky, I mean, for sure. you were shopping at, you know, Walmart and, you know, random places yeah, to try yeah. to find a Panther Martin or, or Castmaster. Uh, yeah. Castmaster, <laughs> Picking right? up your ugly stack. Totally. Our store obviously is, is a, a big JDM store, a high-end shop, like we like good shit. Exactly. Right? And yeah. one of the cool things to see is a lot of these bigger, you know, Japanese brands are trying to find more lanes to go down other than just bass. Because exactly. in Japan, bass fishing is, is falling off, right? And one of the reasons that makes uh, you know Japanese bass fishing brands so innovative is because the fishing really sucks. It's, yeah, I it's mean, grind out there. it's really hard, it's right? They're on an and island. 
they're on an there island. There can't be that many, much water. Right? There's not a lot of water yeah. and there's <laughs> shit loads of people. So, you know, bass fishing is kind of in a decline. They are starting to branch out more into the trout world. And so now all of a sudden it's kind of bridged this gap between this power bait dunker and the fly fishermen. Mm -hmm. And now we have this beautiful realm. And, and a lot of guys have been into like BFS fishing and right. they've kind of been in this realm yep. for, you know, many years, mm -hmm. but to see it now kind of come full circle and really targeted towards trout yeah. is pretty special. Now we're wading streams with bougie ass <laughs> thousand dollar rod and reel combos, sick ass packs and all these dope baits, right? Yeah. And everything that we're gonna talk about today is gonna be trout oriented, but you guys can take these same ideas, these same concepts, the same tackle, the same everything that we're talking about, and you can apply it to stream smallies oh, yeah. because those live in a lot of the same places sure. that we're fishing, mm -hmm. stream largemouth, river large, if you could apply it to anything, right? So we're just kind of using trout as a topic because that's, that's what, what it is. Do. That's what we're into <laughs> right. right now. <laughs> right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just sit back, right? And let people hear from you guys. Sure. Kind of what you do, how you approach it, why you approach it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kind of just be the, the moderator here. Sweet. Does that sound Golden. good? Sounds so good. what is it about this quest for these big browns, whether it's in a stream or in a lake, what is it about fishing trout that is so attractive to you and, and kind of has you guys going down this, this rabbit hole? I mean, for me at least, it's kind of funny. I almost got sick of bass fishing after getting out of high school. I fished high school tournaments my whole life and then I was just kind of over it. So I wasn't fishing much at all. And uh, Andrew introduced me to trout. And what I love so much about it is they're just so unique. Every fish is different. Every fish is special. They're like people. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. the places you're chasing them is beautiful. It's not rolling to Plez for the thousandth time, you know? Right. So you're appreciating the patterns, the colors, the the actual wildlife. Holding totally. the trout is like trippy. Like when you when yeah. you're holding it and you see all the colors and the spots and it's a real wild fish. And what it's I love sick. is the feeling I get catching them. It reminds me a lot of being in a tournament and it's coming down to the wire and you need a good one. And it's, it rem it's the same feeling as hooking into that big fish in a tournament where you're shaking, you're like, oh my God, I need this fish in the boat. Yeah. And it's that same feeling, right. which yeah. I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's always something kind of like primal. I, I think oh, in yeah. stream fishing, oh, right? Sure. I mean, as much as I love being on my bass boat and going 100 miles down the lake and you know doing all the normal oh, bass yeah. boat stuff, there's something special about standing on your feet on the ground in a stream or in a river, flowing water, nature. I mean, it's basically just like taking you back to oh, yeah. man versus beast. If we went to the lake right now, and we caught a, an eight-inch bass, we would not be looking at that bass going, oh, look oh, we'd at, be that. Pissed, look at the spots. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, pissed. literally, you might kick the fish over no, the side I'd of the boat. Shaking oh, it trying off, to shake like... it off. <laughs> right. Another dink. But you could go to some remote place and hike 12 miles into some canyon and get down your hands and knees and crawl and scrape and through oh, blackberry yeah. bushes and everything and pitch a little thing out there and catch this little wild fish Gorgeous. and just be totally in awe. Right. Exactly. It like shocks you where they live. Like the places that you catch them definitely make the experience. A lot of the people listening, you know, the, the point of me wanting to bring you guys in is, you know, obviously I, I want to shed light on how much fun these adventures can be for exactly. people, right? Yeah. And it's, it's a much more approachable lane for somebody to get into. You don't need to spend a quarter of a million dollars to get a truck and a boat. Yeah. Exactly. No truck, right? no boat. So yeah. you can literally just pull out a map and find some water and well, maybe not if you live in Florida. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but almost pretty much any other state, you could pull out a map and find some water and go trout fishing. Obviously, you know, you guys are in college, you're young, you're in shape. And a lot of guys are gonna look at some of the stuff that we're gonna put out featuring you guys and they go, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, there ain't no that. way I can climb <laughs> yeah. that cliff yeah. face or it's, do it's whatever. Definitely not for everyone, but uh, yeah. but, my ass, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, the, CJ was limping for like a week after mm -hmm. the first time. They caught a fish and I felt like I earned it. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. Yeah, that, that what makes it so special as well is you got to earn it you got to get after it out there there's yeah we're hiking over ridges for miles all day sometimes multiple days 
and that's part of that's part of the reward yeah right, right? is yeah. you put so much effort into it now to flip it back around there is also a huge push in Japan for what's called areas trap mm -hmm. which are ponds mm -hmm. right basically like an urban pond would be for us that they stock with trout oh, yeah. that people could go and enjoy easily exactly. close to home yeah. just to drive no mm -hmm. going through ravines or yeah. you know <laughs> scaling canyons right, right. Yeah. and there are brands you know like a Balkan or something like that mm -hmm. that are aiming and targeting a high-end gear specifically toward sure. those people mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about gear wise is completely transferable if you guys are are watching these two knuckleheads you know like you know they're, they're too intense you can take the same knowledge that they have of the species of the of the baits of the gear and you can tone it down to fit your lane and your speed of fishing too I think it would be amazing if everybody just went and had some like sick ass adventures and we all just go for it, right? Yeah. But you know, not everybody has that ability. Just soak it in, right? Yeah. And apply it to whatever you guys think you can apply to in your neck of the woods. Let's let's start diving in. You basically, when you're talking about trout, you have still water and you have moving water. Still water would be something like a lake, a pond, mm -hmm. in this area stuff we're talking about. And then moving water could be a massive river, like mm -hmm. which you would see like on the Colorado or yeah. up in Montana or something like that, all the way down to small trickle. Like yeah. inches literally of water. trickles, right? Yeah. So inches you don't inches think of that water. Fishing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you approaching or is is the approach the same, whether it's a trickle or you know, a big body of water, you guys are targeting well, let me ask you, are you targeting the the biggest fish in the area? Are you targeting just anything to bite? What's going through your mind? Is your is your? It's fishing? gonna depend on the spot, but typically it's always gonna be the biggest fish in the stream. Is, is we're looking for that one pocket that's got the perfect conditions to hold a giant. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna make sure that all of our gear is prepped for a giant. Okay. Because, I mean, little trout are cool, but big trout are cooler. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Pretty much when we're doing this, whether it's a really small stream that maybe they can't get super big in, or big water where there's giants, we're really just targeting the hardest pulling fish we can find. Okay. Yeah. okay. We want that, that tug, we want our drag kind of, screaming. Any kind of fishing for us. Yeah. yeah. So when you're when you're targeting the biggest ones, when you're talking about trout specifically, I think when most people think of trout, they think of like a dry fly. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like little, you know, fish sucking you know, little bugs off the surface, yep. or they're thinking about power bait, mm -hmm. like yeah. throwing bait down on the bottom and just letting something swim around, yeah. right? What is going through the mindset of how you're choosing baits and and what are you trying to do? Or how are you targeting just the biggest ones? Tip, well, typically we're trying to either imitate like a bait fish or a craw type presentation because that's mainly what the better ones are feeding on. Sure, they'll eat bugs off the surface and stuff, but I feel like you'd run into a lot more smaller ones fishing that way, because a big trout, they're smart, they've lived a long life, and they want something that's worth it for their energy to go out, eat it, and like expend that energy. They want it to be worth it. So you want to give them like a solid presentation. Right. So yeah. risk versus reward. Yeah, a big trout will go up and slurp <laughs> 20 crawdads in a night if it's hungry. I mean crawdads are, are a lot bigger than bugs so these things need a lot of calories to stay fat and they'll hunt bigger prey than, than just flies for sure. So when a trout is born it basically spends its first like 14 inches of life eating nothing but bugs. Yes, yeah, right. Exactly. Right? But for a trout to continue to grow past 14 inches it has to switch to oh, yeah. some kind of legit protein, yeah. exactly. whether it's bait fish or crawdads, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, those are basically the two, two staples, main right. choices yeah. for most of the world, right? Mm -hmm. So, like you said, you could catch a 30 inch brown oh, yeah. on a size 22 yeah. midge or something, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, he might still eat that. It's kind of like us, like, I'm still going to eat a cracker. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's a cracker yeah. sitting right there. It's not the steak, though. I'm yeah. going to eat it. Right. But I'd much rather have the ribeye. Mm -hmm. Right? So you guys are basically just giving them the ribeyes. Yep. Exactly. I mean, we yeah. may get less bites throwing a, a bigger bait around, but it's worth it for us, for sure. And okay. we can also cover a lot more water quicker with 
with these style of baits. And so I think that's important yeah. too when that's, we're that's when we're talking about streams and sure. rivers. Yeah. Are you yeah. you guys are moving at a pretty fast pace? Ridiculous. We're moving fast. quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're being efficient. Yes. But you're being speedy. Yeah. You're just trying to cover as we're much also water being as you can. Very careful to be very thorough while okay. we're being yeah. speedy. We want to hit every inch of the pool because you don't. You, we can't see under the water. You don't know if there's a boulder there that's holding all the trout right on that boulder. So we want to really fish the whole pool as fast as we can. Move on. Okay, yeah. so let's say I'm in a pool that's, say, 40 foot long and 8 foot wide, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Are you usually starting from the downstream side and working up? Are you starting from the upstream side and working down? Does it vary so, depending on where yeah. you're at? Basically, whenever we're fishing, usually we're going to be starting at a point and then we're either going to, from the car, we're going to go up or we're going to go down. Okay. So we're going to end up fishing both ways no matter what. So okay. we got to come back to where we started. Okay. So on the way in, we'll, we'll fish up, fish down. I never even notice really much of a difference. You okay. fit going both ways pretty equally. Okay. What if it's a bigger pool like you were talking about. Okay. So those fish will, will spread out. and the, the Different angles are good for sure, though. Like, I've, like I said, fit both ways. Don't really notice one. So as you're working these baits through, you, you are comfortable putting some of these baits upstream and letting it drift downstream oh, yeah, like it would sure. naturally happen. Yeah. Exactly. But you're equally as comfortable being upstream, mm -hmm. throwing it yeah. downstream and, and bringing it against the current. Exactly. are better for, for different ways Well, this would well. be great. Yeah, Okay. for sure. All right, so, you know, because typically, you know, you you throw upstream and let it drift naturally, exactly. right? Yeah, which so, works great, but I mean, there's certain baits that really like to cut up in the current, and sink butt down. Like, Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's dive into some of those for baits. sure. Okay. Yeah. So, talk to us. Uh, grab some baits. Let's let's say we're stream fishing, uh, or maybe just walking the banks of a of a cool little lake by our house or a mountain lake or something. Give me what's happening. Start it off. I guess a good place to start would be uh, sinking bait, because mm -hmm. typically we either utilize a sinking bait or a suspending bait. Okay. Those are pretty much the two we like to be throwing, okay. depending on the conditions. So if we have current moving and like good moving water, we really like to utilize a sinking bait because okay. yeah. it allows it to really get down there into the strike zone where these fish are hanging out. Floating is not a um, thing in the, in the current world for you? I only throw a floating bait in current if it's like inches of water. Like, I, I like there's really no other option point. or you're yeah. snagging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Even the suspending baits, you can work them on the surface, like just inches below and work it just fine and if you want to stop it you have that option to pause it and let it hang out there I mean, and it's not yeah. going to float to the surface okay one of my favorites one of the first baits i ever picked up was the mega bass great hunting humpback yeah, hold that um, up nice and close for me ben oh let's get I'm a good i'm video. going to cj <laughs> i'm going to plug that, in the coordinates that's that right here on this bait yeah here we go there this is go. a great bait for us let's, see, um, let's get that focus come on girl let's go there she is got it oh yeah that's a beauty yep a lot of these baits are going to be pretty similar in their action as where they're all sinking really erratic fast baits you have a lot of contact with the rod and you're fishing it in the current keeping it moving i almost would say like if you know like how to fish a blade bait good and you can pick up one of these and kind of keep that same jigging retrieve keeping your line tight at all times so this is more of kind of a lift and drop for sure, I, that's at least the way I fish it, I'm, okay. I'm lifting and dropping. I'm trying to drag it over boulders, <laughs> sink it off the back of the boulder. A lot of contact with structure for sure. Okay. Yeah. Are you usually starting at the same point? Pretty much, except uh, my really <coughs> big confidence bait that I've been loving is over something like a humpback or another sinking bait of that type. I've been loving this decontact yeah, by that, Smith. All that up. So what is it about the decontact? I hear you talk about this one all the time. Why are you choosing this over, say, the humpback? Uh, it really just comes down to confidence. It's a bait I've fished a lot. I've had a lot of success with it. And because of that, I have a bunch of confidence. And I think the reason I like it so much is there's so many different ways you can fish it once you really figure it out and spend time throwing it okay. that you can't do with other baits. So what might not be common is I really like fishing this thing fast and off the bottom and it responds really well to that. Almost like an erratic walk the dog action. Interesting. And it just drives fish crazy. I see him working it like his rod's going crazy, that thing. Like, like you'd think I'm really, an idiot really if you saw me on the side of the creek <laughs> right. fishing well, like that. Well, a fly fisherman would think you're an idiot. Yeah, right. Right. but it gets smoked, <laughs> right. so. 
it's really fun. Interesting. Mm. So one thing while we're on these tiny baits, you know, a lot of guys, especially if you're coming from the bass world, uh, you're probably going to look at some of these baits and think jerk bait, mm -hmm. yes. right? And they can certainly be jerked, For sure. yeah. right? But because of the nature of the bait and because they're, you know, all these baits we're talking about so far, or these, at least these first couple, they're built for current. Exactly. So they're built more like a crank bait yeah. mm -hmm. than a jerk bait. A sinking crank bait is like a Almost good way. Almost more like a lipless. It's like a lipless with a lip. It is. I don't know how right. it's like. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you can jerk it, but really that kind of lift and drop and straight retrieve yeah. is how you're going to be doing this. Now, yeah. talk to me about the hardware on these things, because I know we have these conversations a lot. So, hardware on all of these, yep. you're going to want to take it off and throw it in the trash. Because if you don't, you're going to get your heart broken. Okay, so are you changing out hooks and split rings? Or are you changing that out just hooks? That depends on the bait. Like okay. If you'll, some of the baits, like, mm -hmm. you'll see these on there. Those split rings are absolutely tiny. Yep. Which is totally fine for small, small stream fishing, stock trout fishing. Yep. You're fishing way lighter line with those, and it fits up. They're, they're good hooks. They're really sharp. But um, for those bigger trout, you almost need to swap them. Like they'll, they'll bend and and snap and the split rings will fully straighten. So just depending on the bait, we will change both split ring and hook. Some okay. of them come with good split rings though. So. Okay. Yeah. And I, I should note that anytime you're buying a trout <clears throat> bait, the hooks are going to naturally be incredibly light wire and yes. thin. Yes. Exactly. Because the majority of the world mm -hmm. is going to be fishing for eight to 12 inch stock right. rainbows. Right. Exactly. Right? So those fish are so delicate and you want hooks that are going to oh, penetrate yeah. and not just rip a fish's yep. face off. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But when you're taking it to a place where you guys are taking it to, which is wild fish, potentially really big fish, mm -hmm. their their mouths are hard. They're like straight right? bone. Like yeah. they really remind me of like a halibut when not the, the bigger ones with they have like beaks almost. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you either gotta skin hook them or get a bigger hook on there and, and get it through. So you're just gonna destroy. Exactly. Yeah, hooks. I've, seen, I've so, seen all kinds of craziness go down with these hooks. Yeah. You, you gotta switch them. Well, and straight. you know, I throw these a lot for bass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And same thing. Let's talk colors really quick. Because yeah. trout coloration yeah. can be something very different than a bass coloration. So the color you're holding yep. is a color that I'm gonna throw in the clearest water that I'm gonna fish. Okay. Just because so it's kind of a natural. To me, that looks trout. like a little baby rainbow or a little baby brown, whatever. Okay. Same with that one. Super natural, like okay. a little trout. So any of these trout natural fry. trout patterns are good. Right, and okay. then the other side of it is we're gonna go gold. Hold those other two up again. Hold them all up together real quick. So Take when you gold. go, when you go gold, yeah. right? And gold is probably gold, black, gold, red, all all the golds. Trout love gold. They love oh, it's a staple. They love it. Clear yeah. water, dirty water. You guys are throwing it yes. in both. Like exactly. it makes no difference. Yeah, no. yeah. Just depends on how they're eating it, because sometimes they'll pull up to clear water and they'll just be chewing gold 10 to 1 compared to a natural pattern. Isn't that crazy? It is. There's something about that color. In the bass yeah. world, you think of gold as a muddy water color. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And trout just love it. It's kind of like a green pumpkin is to a bass. Yeah. It really it doesn't is. doesn't matter yeah. which yeah. they're yeah. going to yeah. eat, yeah. right? Black and gold is green pumpkin for, totally. for trout. Totally. Totally. <laughs> okay. So let's keep going down the, the bait rabbit hole then. Mm -hmm. When or why would you throw something other than either a great hunting or a, a decontact? What, what else are you adding to so, your arsenal? If the current's a little bit stronger, or if, like we were talking about earlier, I'm fishing not typically where you're drifting down, I'm fishing with the current through it, then I'm going to throw a duo. All the sizes are good, usually staying in that 45 to 60 range. Let me see one of those real quick. Oh, yeah. take both of them. Um, these guys are better at fishing in heavier current because when they sink, you'll notice they sink butt down and it's almost like you can get them to really stay in the same place in heavy current. Those baits actually come with good hooks and split rings as well. So th these things are ready to so go. So you'll just throw these straight out of the package? Oh, well, yeah. Straight yeah. out of the yeah. box. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a similar shape, but different mm -hmm. internals. Yeah. Right? So like some of these great huntings will have like some moving rattles mm -hmm. in them. Mm -hmm. The duos are all kind of a fixed system. Yeah. Right? Yep. So you're not going to get a lot of internal sound, but they're, they're mm -hmm. weighted to be fixed, which makes sense that it's cutting through the current. Yeah. Different. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Suspending small jerk baits, X70, OSP Durga, stuff like that. Okay. Um, 
You caught a big one on the Durga. I did. The other day. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm, sure did. So why are, when and why are you using a, a suspending jerk bait? Hand me that X70 or a Durga, sure. whatever you got. So they handed it to me. So well, when it I comes... just show them how to catch it on it. <laughs> I see. Second cast of the day. I see. How do you get CJ Brown? So this is, this is more into like the true jerk bait realm. Exactly. Right. We're just right. downsizing here yep. into smaller mm -hmm. baits. So they're more creek sizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why are you choosing this over a sinking one? So a lot of the times the trout will want something. It's kind of the opposite of what you'd think for bass. But okay. when the bite's slow, they almost want something moving fast. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, you almost need to go for that reaction strike. Exactly. Okay. So we're burning these baits across pools way faster than you'd think you should if the bite's slow because it gets that reaction out of the fish. Okay. And you can definitely tell after spending like a few hours on a creek or something, whether they're more keyed in on that slow, like bouncing off the bottom or if they want stuff quick. Right, that's that's like what I was gonna say is we'll show up and probably one of us will have a sinking bait, one of us will have a smaller jerk bait on and whoever's getting more, like if it looks like they're coming up for the jerk bait, we'll just both switch to Exactly. That. Then you could just cover and ground much better. They're really yeah. liking that bottom contact, over, drag it over rocks, let it sink in the heaviest of current, and we'll, we'll be throwing sinking baits all day. So okay. yep. just good to bring both. Easy one-two yep. yep. punch, easy That's way exactly. to dial it in that we, fast. That yeah. we do, yeah. Okay, yeah. and when you're doing that, are you throwing different colors for too? Sure. Oh, Constantly running switching through the colors. box. We, we both throw a small snap, and we're like, all day just switching colors yeah switching baits. okay until we start getting bit we're changing colors a ton yeah okay yeah so a ton is in like you might go through eight or ten different options in an hour oh yeah. easy yeah yeah i Sometimes. might go through five baits in a pool if i think there's a fish in there that's not biting interesting exactly okay so you're really picking it apart right. yeah. yeah okay because yeah. oftentimes we'll be fishing a pool for 20 minutes you've made the same cast 50 times and on that 51st cast, literally. you get slammed yeah. by a giant and yeah. you didn't even know it was in there. You can make the same, literally 50 So what is it that makes you stay and continue to make that It's cast. all confidence. As okay. soon as yeah. you feel like, like, ah, I need to change, you just change. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Like if you, okay. You know, like all the baits are very similar in their yeah. actions, but they are different and they do get bit differently sometimes. Like just keep changing. And sometimes you just know there's a fish yeah. like laying the, on a boulder, laying on a log, laying box, somewhere. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Where else are we going with baits, or does that cover it? Um, we've got spinner spoon. Okay. Which uh, so this is going to be more yeah. old school. I mean, these For are sure, new school, school versions. Old, new right? school, exactly. old school. Okay, so getting there. us some metals here. Give me those. Yes. They'll learn, CJ. <laughs> They'll right. learn to it hold takes them. Takes a second to focus, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when are you throwing a? a a spoon, what are you throwing a spinner? So like the spinner you have in your hand there, uh -huh. yep. um, that's a bait that if the water is extremely, extremely murky, which will happen, um, I will pick something like this up and just fish it, sink it to the bottom and just slow roll it. And uh, it gets bit. It's really interesting to see how well these perform compared to like your average Panther Martin right. or right. your average Castmaster. Yes. Sure. How much more you can do with these baits and the applications mm -hmm. they give you are really cool to yeah. see, especially okay. in like small water yeah. for these ones, especially. Like these spinners have a rotating line tie. I don't know if you've ever fished a Panther Martin. But right, but it's just a, a twist just nightmare. Old. You either got to right. throw a swivel and a snap that's this big and. And yeah. Like and so this eliminates or, that yeah. line twist. Yeah. It's just yeah. such a good. Such and you get more action. It's funny. The yeah. way it's it such darts. small little, little things. Tiny. That's all they had to do. Right. <laughs> it makes such yeah. a big it difference. Does make a right? big difference. Yeah. yeah. So, a lot of these baits too are perfect for fishing some of the smaller stillwater right. stuff. Right. Right. So exactly. if you're going to go to a pond, if you're going to go to a small lake, mm -hmm. all yep. pretty much everything in our arsenal that you've just covered, we could have the mm -hmm. same application to. Yeah. You just could be making different casts, different yeah. angles, yeah. right? Exactly. Okay. These guys too are, are almost less snaggy than, than these bottom baits. So if you're fishing those streams that are a couple inches deep, this is what we're going to be throwing all day is, is single hook, small stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's, <clears throat> let's cover rods. I mean, I've, I've watched you guys fish. I've, you know, we've seen the videos. So talk to us about what you're doing. Uh, and again, we're obviously doing this on a on a bougie level. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. it's what we do. <laughs> and why not? It's it makes it more so fun. cool, right? It does. Yeah. Do you have to do it at this level? No. Of course not. Hell no. But let's let's talk about this level. And then if you guys want to try this, but you don't necessarily want to go down quite these crazy rabbit holes, 
then you can reach out to any of us. You got all of our yep. handles, even his ridiculous handle. <laughs> uh, and we can help you, you know, find the action or whatever that you're looking for in something less expensive. Exactly. If you want to go down that path. Sure. All right, talk to us about what you got in your hand. What do you got? So right here, I have the Kurosame Special. This is a F1 66 XS. I don't know if you're gonna be here. Able to see let me that, show you. Yeah. Hold that real close from here. <laughs> here you go. Ben's in charge of yeah. holding. Let's show this beautiful rod. rod. All right, so this is in the Mega Bass Destroyer P5 line. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so this is the Kurosame Special. So what do you what do you love this rod for? Is this for doing everything we just talked no. about? So okay. for me, this rod is the creek rod especially when it comes to these bottom baits like the decontact or the humpbacks yeah this thing is just the perfect rod okay it's I'd say that's amazing. the best one that we found okay just from playing around the yeah. past few months with okay. these crazy rods because the way the tip responds it reminds me almost of the steez mega top how well, that tip it's folds. almost the same so yeah. this is a stinger tip rod mm -hmm. right so you you're basically going from a cross weave graphite all the way up to that last kind of 12 inches is going to be a solid carbon tip. Yeah. So it's going to give you, it makes sense now that you're talking about it because it's going to, it's, it's soft yeah. because it's so thin, mm -hmm. but it's so responsive. Yeah. Like, so responsive. It, it's when you're instant. working the rod yeah. so much like we are, like it, it's important to not have too whippy of a rod. Okay. Yeah. You, it's just going to get out of control. It's going to be much more responsive on a rod. I guess if all you're doing is throwing like a, a spinner, where it's just cast right. and wine yeah. and you're yeah. just kind of brain dead with it, mm -hmm. you'd probably want the softest rod you could. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. you got little treble hooks, you got softish mouths, and it's just going to kind of absorb. But you guys are, are pretty aggressive with these little baits. Yeah. So you're kind of bridging the gap between the parabolicness and the softness mm -hmm. versus the fastness. You kind of want yeah. that in yeah. between, and this is right. giving it to you. And we're and, also yeah. picking our rods for how they play big fish because that's why we're out mm -hmm. there because okay. okay. if you can see this matters. thing it really starts to shut off and you have some amazing backbone in there where i'd feel super comfortable fighting a double digit class fish on this rod yeah because of that backbone but it allows me to work those bottom baits that are really small and tiny exactly how i want okay so it has that soft tip but then once you get into the business of this rod, you're yep. having no issues on big fish. Okay. And then when you have a smaller, lighter rod like this, what are you pairing up real wise, like, or as far as size class goes? Yeah. Uh, I like a 2000 size reel. Okay. We got that Kage. Here we have a Kage. That's what I've been running on it. Kind of our go to reel this year. Okay. Yep. For this creek stuff. So you like a 2000? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because I think a 2500 is just overkill, definitely. honestly. Okay. Definitely yeah. don't need that big of a reel, especially on these tiny rods. It balances out. Just much feels better. amazing yeah. okay. on there. Yeah. So typically in the spinning realm, I don't know if a lot of guys know this, but you know, as you go as you go down in size, every size is a is a is a totally different model, right? Yeah. So when yeah, you go yeah. from a 5000 to a 4000, everything gets smaller. When you go from a 4000 to 3000, everything gets smaller. 3025 everything gets smaller. 2,000 and 1,000 typically are the same size they're, reel. Yeah, they're the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just the head portion, the spool size, mm -hmm. yeah. that's different exactly. most of the time, yeah. right? So a 2,000 kind of gives you the best of both worlds so that you get the small compact right. body of the 1,000, yeah. but you actually get a wide enough, yes. big enough spool and front section to where it takes drag good yep. and, and yeah. you can you can play it so and this makes like a lot of sense you can take a 2000 size reel and and throw a creek bait at the creek and then you can take to the lake and throw a 90 millimeter jerk bait right it's the same, same right thing. it's big it's, enough to do yeah it's, exactly yeah no problem so. okay i see you've got a couple other rods yeah. over there so talk talk to me about what else you brought other p5 this is the whip it you just hand it to me you <laughs> i'll be the model <laughs> and you just talk okay so, so this is the p5 yep. whip it the Whippet is uh, another lighter rod for sure in the P5 line, but it's got like a faster tip. It's it's not as responsive as the, the Kurosame. Like, we're using that for for the Durgas and our jerk baits. It just seems to be better for working the, those type of baits. So more of a true jerk bait. Yeah, rod. exactly. Because yeah. it okay. has that stiffer like, tip, 
so it allows you mm. to get a good jerk in that action you want when you're yep. snapping it yep. and you yeah. get to use all that like slack line for the action yep. exactly and it's just so much less effort than using a rod, for example, like that Kurosame, mm -hmm. where it'd be bending deeper into the blank mm -hmm. to get that same yeah. action. Yeah. So okay. this rod doesn't feel as great on the on the creek baits, but it feels really good for those for suspending baits. For the little baits. jerk baits. Yeah, even okay. going up to a 110 junior. And okay. At this point, rod. I just call that yeah. the Durga rod. Yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's literally what we call it. Yeah. Yeah. What's that, CJ? That's what you, you caught your big fish on, right? That's Maybe. what you caught yours on. You caught oh, yours yeah. on. Yeah, mine was on the Kurosame. Yeah, when sick. I, when I, I know this is you can really blade. control those bigger fish with that. Oh, amazing. And those tight spaces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you yeah. really can. Big plus. These rods are sweet. What else you got over here? Um, I love how we're breaking this down. Yeah. By yeah. the way. It's cool. Gone is a day of like, I need a seven foot medium light. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. we're really getting specific on this stuff. Here's right. a $500 rod. Right. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> switching gears, BFS. Here you go, Ben. Okay. Yeah, so if we're gonna pick up a lure that's one to three grams, something that's just like super tiny. And yep. we're fishing that, where is it? Like those Vulcan yeah. spoons? Like these little guys here okay. are, is what we're gonna be slapping on these rods. So you're really tiny, you're using the water. BFS, you're using the casting gear mm -hmm. for the lightest. For the lightest, exactly. the lightest Interesting. Lightest. Which is yeah. kind of the contrary of what you'd think. Yeah. You would think, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. right. But I mean, when you, you feel this rod on a fish compared yeah. to like the Kurosame, yeah. the Kurosame's got triple the power. Like Interesting. This mm -hmm. thing just, feels really good on those those tiny fish doing those underhand casts yeah in the small streams yep it just seems like it fishes more efficiently okay so it, it in, is really in theory fun. you should be able to fish much faster with right a casting right. setup yeah. than a spinning yeah. because you just everything's yeah. going to be more control but we've right? just got <laughs> downsized line on here and we decided to utilize it to throw those tiny little baits okay it was a so we're doing p5 pop x stick a yeah, little steez air. Yeah. We're doing uh, pretty light. This is the Veravis uh, trout bait yeah, finesse yeah. braid to a liter. Yeah. Yep. Is it ten? And yeah. we're doing yeah. braid to a liter also on the spinning. Yeah. Yep. Always braid to a liter. Okay. I feel like that just gives you the best sensitivity and strength when dealing with these fish. Okay. It just plays mm -hmm. so much nicer. And yeah. what size leader are we using? I feel like people are always shocked Anywhere? by our leader size. Yeah. yeah. People okay. think of trout and they're like, all right, two pounds, two pound, four pounds, pound, pound. four pounds. Six yeah. pounds is like the max like most right. guys are throwing. I mean, the lightest I would ever throw is seven pound personally. Okay. Just because I've had my heart broken too many times on lighter line. Okay. And so we have nine and seven here. I'll throw eight. Six is like the lightest I'll go Okay. Yeah. on the creek. So you're kind of in that seven to... Yep. 10 pound, yeah. yep. similar to what we would be doing for bass fishing. Exactly, right. I'll okay. even fish up to 12 if I'm at a lake where I know there's big fish. Yeah. Okay, I'm that, running that goes with pounds. us swapping our hooks as well. Okay, you yeah. You definitely have to have swapped hooks if you're gonna throw the heavier line. Okay. But when they do roll or get into a stick or whatever big fish do, it definitely helps. To be able to put a little oh, yeah. more, power more on them to get them coming out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Because I've had four pound just explode when I hook a big one. And you don't find that they're sucks. necessarily line shy. No. no, I really don't. The way it's we're, moving we're, pretty fast. We're working exactly. these guys so fast through such a small hole. It's like they have a, a second They have to make a decision. They're, gonna, they're yeah. either going to react and eat this thing or right. it's gone. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. just how it is in the creek. You, Interesting. I mean, yeah. <laughs> bait's going down the current. It's gone forever. You got, you got one chance. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Might as well yeah. go with the heaviest yeah. you can get away with. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's and what we're trying to do. Even with the running 12 pound line, one of my more recent fish, it was probably like 21, 22 inch fish and it snapped the 12 the second it got in the net. Oh, yeah. They'll roll in that line, and once they're rolling in it, like it, you're at the mercy of the fish pretty much. Right. If they want to snap it, they're going to snap it. Yeah, interesting. Yep. All right, you got one more rod over there. Talk to Dude. me about that last one. This rod is great hunting. a great hunting. Okay. Multi-piece. Okay. And I have found that this rod fishes more like a true ultralight, where okay. it really bends all the way down. Yeah, there's going to be a, basically with, a Full right. parabolic rod. Yeah, yeah Which very from parabolic. From tip to butt. When are you choosing? Any of my baits soft. that have a size 12 treble hook on them, which is the smallest size we'll throw. Okay. So like 45 millimeter rod. size baits. So yeah. anything super tiny mm -hmm. yeah. with a little treble, yeah. we're going great hunting. Okay, and this makes sense. Yeah. Right. So you just want that extra give just to not yeah. pull you don't want or to be straighten those hooks. Yeah. 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 Okay, makes sense. Um, stock trout, lake rod, this would be... Sick. Yeah. yeah. So It'd be fun. super sick. So exactly. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the main line. We talked about mm -hmm. leader, but I see you holding some. This is my favorite line. All right. Talk about it. 
This is the uh, the fire, fifteen pound. It's we the, like the the nineteen the as well. Brand. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This and stuff is sick. It ties knots better than any any light braid that I've used. This line has a core yeah. that runs down through it and, and what that core does is it just gives the lines a certain amount of rigidity. It eliminates a lot of those real annoying wind knots when your yes. line's exactly. too thin. Mm -hmm. and, and again, getting back to what you guys said about lime, I think historically the idea of little small stream trout has know. been like micro everything. Yeah, let's yeah. throw a four pound braid with a two pound leader. Right, like yeah. just crazy thin <laughs> Super to where small. you make one tiny mistake and that shit is, mm -hmm. I mean, exactly. everywhere around yeah. your, your reel, around your guides, mm -hmm. around, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you get like rough fingers from oh, a lot yeah, of the yeah. hard water, oh, it's frayed, you can't up. tie knots. So we're basically that's... using the same line that we use in bass fishing. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. The same kind of rods and reels even, right. we're just, Scaling the rod and reel down, down just a bit to manage yeah. the weight of these just smaller the baits. baits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if we could throw the the full size, yeah, and fish the baits just as comfortably, we probably would because these fish are as big as bass and they fight harder, just as hard. And I think the roll is underestimated a lot in in bigger trout. Yes. Yeah. You know, the with roll bass, is devastating. I can hook a ten pound bass on three pound. Mm -hmm. I know exactly how that bass is going to move. Yes. Exactly. Right. The only time it could possibly surprise me would be when it jumps. It jumps. But I can visually landing. see him yeah. jumping mm -hmm. and I could adjust as I'm as things are happening. Mm -hmm. But I know that his head shake's gonna be left and right yep. and he's gonna swim in a straight line. Whereas you hook a trout, even like a twenty inch trout like we were talking about, no could still potentially happen. weigh four or five pounds. Yes. Exactly. Right? And that thing could be spinning like a catfish yeah, it could roll. it could sh i mean who knows what it's going to do they'll rock it out of the water a couple of yeah, feet they, like they, totally yeah they yeah change directions incredibly fast now talk to me about seasonality uh is that you know obviously it's it's summer now it's warm so this sounds amazing to go stand in some in some creeks and wet wade and <laughs> yeah. cool down but is you know is this smaller water trout fishing is this just a summertime thing or is this something that people can do year round or how we are you guys year round i actually feel like the summer is, is the worst not, yeah one of the worst times <laughs> of the year to hit it just because for our state it gets ridiculously hot like we're down at the creek in the summer and it's 90 90 degrees sunny so it's not ideal no. trout no, no the trout right? definitely trout don't like it love <laughs> cold water and they need cold water to survive so it, it is a, an obstacle okay. we tend to do better in the spring the fall so when the water gets murkier, mm -hmm. what is that doing to the fish or how is that changing your approach? So I actually feel like it's almost easier to catch these fish in murky water. Okay. Because trout are visual predators. If they can't see your bait as good and get a look at it, they're more likely to eat it, I think. If yeah. they do see it. If they see it at all, they're going to eat it. But the problem sometimes can be getting them to even see it because it gets really, really murky. Do they position in the same places like is a trout that sits on a boulder going to sit on that boulder where the water's clear or yeah. muddy we'll find them in their boulders in like the colder times of the day or night night fishing is something we do during the summer um but up high in the current absorbing the, the coldest water coming into the pool is going to be the current that's usually where the deep holes are okay mm -hmm. that's where we'll, we'll usually find them in the summer Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Did we not cover that you want to touch base on, or did we uh, hit everything? No. We got Is there anything that you can think of, CJ? Uh, yeah, uh, I think the next topic would be salmon. We want to start <laughs> it on that. I think we're good. No, I think we're good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, this was fun. It was. And I'm looking forward to more of these conversations. Sure. You guys are going to see a lot more trout BFS adventures from us here because we all love to do it. We all believe it's just a super fun, just super exciting, high energy way of fishing. So hopefully you guys can take some of the I don't know, nonsense that uh, that we're yeah. throwing around and apply it to your own fishing and, and have a lot of success. But if you have questions for myself, but more importantly, for these two guys, if, if you wanna pick their brains on anything, drop it down below in the comment section and we will definitely get to it. CJ will leave links to everything we covered as far as gear and stuff. You guys want to check any of that stuff out as well. And again, we're an open book. So if you have yeah. questions on any of it, holler at us anytime. Callan, Andrew. Thanks for having you, us. Sir. CJ, 
Thank you guys. It was uh, it was fun. It was. I love talking trout, man. Oh, no, no, I no, can no. do it all day. All I know. Day. I just I want to try another beer and keep talking. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> so uh, if you guys enjoy this rabbit hole, holler at us, let us know, and we will keep this stuff coming. Guys, as always, thank you for the time. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your business. And on behalf of myself and these two crazy dudes and that crazy dude and everybody here at The Hookup, uh, thank you so much. We will see you on the next one. Peace out, guys. Good job, guys. Thanks. Nice. Thanks, dude.